Hey everybody, Darren Bohannes here with the Hummingbird. I'm just gonna run through a few of the basic settings. As soon as you turn your Hummingbird on, what are a couple of the features and settings that you're just automatically with just? For the most part, you turn your Hummingbird on, there's really not much that you have to do. Um, but some of the things like units, uh, you know, time zone, sensitivity, a few other little you know, settings you can adjust and it's very, very easy to do. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my main menu. The default setting is actually on uh, actually angler mode and what I want to do is I want to set that to custom right away what you're going to see is that it's going to give me a lot more menu options these are the advanced menu settings then what I'll basically do is I'll just sort of start in a sequence I'll start it with my setup I'll scroll down I'll adjust my time zone as I need to if you hit exit once it takes you to the top of the screen then what I'll do is I'll just keep on working my way to the left here. Um, a feature that I do like to adjust uh, is when I go to the nav tab is there's a feature here called waypoint decluttering. When I'm navigating, I don't want my waypoints adjusted in any which way. I want them to be the actual raw waypoints, not a shrunken down waypoint. Sometimes what happens when you have a lot of waypoints that are clustered together is that it'll shrink them down into a smaller blue dot. I don't want them altered. So for example, if I marked a hazard or a reef, I want it to show that symbol that I actually marked it in. So I like to turn my waypoint decluttering feature off and then I just leave it. There's nothing else really that you have to do. Um, then when I go to the sonar tab here, you've got all the other different features. Something that comes up uh, a lot is surface clutter. Now intuitively you might think, well, surface clutter, I don't want any surface clutter. So I may as well just lower it all the way. You don't wanna do that. I pretty much always leave my surface clutter at five and it's really important to note that because sometimes what happens, especially when you get into a different type of bottom, soft bottom, hard bottom, um, is you might get those double echoes, okay? What'll happen is, is that, and it might not replicate it here, but sometimes what might happen is, is if we take our surface clutter and drop it all the way down, you're gonna see your depth starting to get a little bit more erratic, okay? So you actually don't wanna reduce your surface clutter. Humminbird is inherently clear, just to begin with, especially on switch wire clear mode, so you don't have to mess around with your surface clutter. Leave it at five. In many cases, I actually bump it up a couple notches. What I might actually do is move it up to six or seven, and then again, leave it. The only time you might need to lower it is if, the, is if, if there's a lot of algae, then you can drop it down a notch. But for the most part, leave it at five and don't touch it. Nothing else that you gotta do. Switch fire mode, clear mode, that's basically the filtered mode. It basically gets rid of a lot of the noise and clutter, especially higher up in the water column. So 95% of the time, I'm gonna leave it on switch fire clear mode. Um, what I might actually do is because of some of the filtering that happens with switch fire clear mode, is I'll take my sensitivity and I'll bump it up a little bit. Usually 12 to 14, somewhere around there. Um, and again, I don't usually adjust it all that much, but when I'm on switch fire clear mode, I will bump up my sensitivity just a little bit to offset some of that filtering. If you're on max mode, which, which is the unfiltered mode, you're actually gonna have to drop down your sensitivity a little bit. So that's one of the things that you may wanna keep an eye on when it comes to some of the adjustments. Again, under the sonar tab, when I scroll down, I always like to have my RTS window on. RTS, which is real-time sonar, you can have it on A-scope, which is what I like for ice fishing, or if you prefer to have it on the classic screen, Always have your, your RTS window on because that's your real-time sonar. That's showing you exactly what's happening directly below the transducer. Everything that happens to the left of the RTS window, that's your sonar history. So when people start talking about lag or delay, well, if you don't have your RTS window on, you're gonna get some lag. Uh, because what you're looking at is strictly sonar history. So I like to turn my RTS window on. The other thing that I like to do, and actually just a little tip, if I just scroll, uh, if I arrow up, it'll take you to the bottom of the menu setting there. Um, your color bar, which is the bar, that color rendering on the far right, that just takes up space. I wanna have as much real estate on the screen as I can, so what I typically do is I'll turn the color bar off. Um, the rest of that is really just preference, right? So your units, um, your waypoint decluttering, switch by your clear mode, leave your surface clutter at five, um, and just a few other little settings from there then you can just adjust your screen, uh, your, your color palettes when you go into some of your further, oops, some of your further menus. Oops, I just had it there. There you go, color five. I actually like to have uh, color palette number seven because from your weaker signal, which is that teal blue color to your stronger signal, the red, um, it's a little bit more intuitive, but you can adjust it whichever way you want. You can see how you have a dark screen, a white screen, other color palettes to go with it. So pretty much right out of the box, you turn the thing on, you don't have to do much from that. The rest of it is really just customizing some of the preferences um, and the preferences that I just went over. Those are the basic ones that I like to set. 
most of the other things you don't have to concern yourself with it too much unless you get into some of the really advanced settings but for 95 percent of the people out there again even me included those are the basic settings that i use and i just run with it as is so very easy to use very simple something to keep in mind when you're adjusting your settings don't make it complicated